Hi, I am Ashley Pfeiffer. I am the maker behind Stamped AF. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Winnipeg, Manitoba. If you live in Canada and do not yet have a demonstrator, I would be thrilled to fill that role for you. You can find everything you need at stampedaf.ca and there you can take in a blog post, you can shop in my online store, you can join my team, you can catch uh, Facebook Live if you follow the link there. You can show me some Insta love. And the best part, well, one of the best parts, you can find out about local events and attend an in-person card class with me. I am hosting them almost every Saturday, but check my Facebook page for the events there. And also, I drop a new video every week. So if you hit that subscribe button below, Deeker says hi, uh, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell beside it so that you'll be notified when a video goes live. And without further ado, let's get our craft. So we are going to be making this card. We may change up the For You Friend because Father's Day is coming up quite soon. So I think we may do For You Dad. But this was a card that I did for the TGIF challenge. And if you want more information, check out my blog because everything you need to know is there. Um, it was a color challenge that used Night of Navy, Smoky Slate, and Old Olive and I thought the waterfront stamp set would just be perfect for that. So that's what I did. And better news, good news I guess, it won. So I had already planned on showing you how to do this, but now that it's a winner, like, duh, it was a no-brainer. So let's get to it. I will post a list of the supplies that I use below. And if you live in Canada, you can shop in my online store 24 seven. If you live in other parts of the world, then you can find a local demonstrator. So, like I said, it is the waterfront stamp set. And this was, um, it was a million dollar sales design. And unfortunately the old packaging does not say who it was, but um, I can link that below. On our new stamp sets, I'll pick varied vases for example. On our new stamp design, it tells you that it was a million dollar design and on the side it says million, oops, million sales achiever Mary Fish. So I love that with the new packaging because these people have worked very hard to get that accomplishment and I think it should go on the packaging. It's a big deal. So, I want to say it's Connie Halsey, but I could be mistaken, so I will verify that and put the name below. We are going to start with a Smoky Slate card base, and this is a top folding card. It will be landscape. So, it is five and a quarter by, sorry, five and a half by eight and a half and then score in the middle. And definitely use the a scoring tool. I use the Simply Score tool by Stampin' Up, but if you have something else, do that because that's what gives you that nice crisp edge. So we'll set that aside. We've got some watercolor paper here and I'm just gonna keep this sample kind of in my view so that I stick with my original design. I'll just get some ink colors out. Like I said, we need Night of Navy. Smoky Slate and Old Olive. And when we get further into this design, I'll show you one of the other colors I used in this. But the first thing we need to do is do our stars. And I won't do as much as I did on this one because it almost looks like there's an isolated snowstorm that has just started. So we are going to use this little beauty from the waterfront stamp set. There's a little fuzzy on there. And we are going to mount it on, probably a C block would be good, but I've got a D block handy. We'll use our Versamark. And grab some white embossing powder. Actually, let's do clear. I feel like everything is just right here. I've got no room. Okay, so we'll open this up. just do a couple 
And when in doubt, you can always layer your embossing powder, set it, and see if there's any gaps. Okay, this may look even more isolated, but um, we'll put a little bit more at the top here. So you can choose if this is snow or it's a starry sky. Be your own little Van Gogh. And if this is the first time you're joining me for a video, this is how I store my embossing powder. It is a Jennifer McGuire hack. So just get, whoops, um, just get some kind of small closable container and I just get those little command adhesive from the dollar store and these little spoons you can get them at Michael's but they cost a small fortune for what it really is I found them at Dollar Tree and you get like a pack of 20 or 25 for a dollar 25 so another no-brainer and this way you can dump your powder back in you don't have any waste so a little pro tip for you there Okay, so we're just going to heat set this. And now we can get to stamping. Done with the Versamark. We are going to grab our smoky slate. Oh, I want to show you something. So I have been using the Simply Chamois to clean my stamps. As you can see, it's filthy. <laughs> um, actually, it looks filthy. It's actually, there's no ink that comes out of this, but this is new in the 2018-19 annual catalog and a must have. The first time I used it in a class, we were kind of meh. But since then, it is just so easy. You get it wet and all you have to do is wipe your stamps. It's amazing. And the one thing you do have to be cautious of, I use this for um, our catalog launch and we had a lot of lovely lipstick and grapefruit growth. So that's why it looks so lovely. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that it does need to dry out between uses and what I have done is I am storing it in a clear stamp case so it fits perfectly in there and the best part there is this fantastic demonstrator in the UK she is uh, she is my graphic design spirit animal I've commented and told her that so she designed this insert for the clear stamp case for the chamois. So beautiful, it hides. For someone who has, um, not to make light of this, but a little bit of OCD tendencies, it's uh, certainly not a diagnosis. But I am a little particular about some things and looking at this like that, uh, <laughs> it's a little crazy making. So when I found this on her blog yesterday for free, I was thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. So this demonstrator's name is Sarah Berry. I am going to link to this in the comments below. D sorry, description below. And anyone that orders a chamois with me will get a clear, a clear case and this insert. So be sure, if you live in Canada, be sure to order your chamois with me. So there we go. So I just keep this at the side of my workspace. And it beats using a baby wipe. It sure beats taking out my stamp and scrub and spraying it every time. 
or every couple times. So I am loving this tool. Now back to the stamping. So we are going to put our mountains pretty high up here. We'll do one at full strength, one at half strength, one at full strength, one at half strength. And I, oops, know that these are uh, pretty uniform, but I am okay with that. So let's see if we can line that up again and put some more pressure. So there we go, that is it. And actually you could do it a third time and get very light mountains in behind there. We'll just stamp this off on our grid paper. This stamp set really can turn anyone into an artist and I think that's why so many people are loving it. Me included. Okay, so that is our mountains. Now we are going to take an aqua painter and our Knight of Navy. We're done with the smoky slate, so I'll just clean that up. I love the new design on the stamp pad so much that I cannot wait to get all of them. I've got the new colors and returning colors in them, but my old ones are still old. So we're just going to paint on some water and try and stay away from your mountains for now because you don't want that gray to bleed into your water. If it does, no biggie. There's really no right or wrong in watercolor. And it's not as hard as uh, many people would have you believe. Now obviously you're not gonna wanna leave a white line there, but we are gonna go in with some darker night of navy once those mountains are dry. And you can see I'm just using ink from the lid and getting a lovely blue, navy, purpley tone to this. If you want a little bit of dark, just take it straight from your ink pad. Add some great depth. Now we are also going to bring in a little bit of dapper denim. This is a mess, but you can tell it's one I've used for water coloring. So again, you just squeeze in a little drop of water. That's that for the water. Um, to clean your brush, just kind of draw with it until it's clear. I don't have any paper towel here right now, otherwise that's how I would clean it, but we make do with what we've got. So I'm gonna leave that out because I may add a little bit more navy in there. And just so that we don't have a harsh line between the water and the trees, we are going to take a little bit of old olive and just create a little grassy shoreline. And you can see on my original card, I did have some bleeding there from the blue to the green. So I wanna try and avoid that this time. And to do that, you just stay away from the color that's still wet. And this part, you're really not gonna see. It's just to fill in any gaps that those trees might leave. So no need to spend too much time on that one. So now we are going to get our beautiful trees, mount those on a C block. And I don't know if you're new to Stampin' Up, a little tip here, and I wasn't aware of this for some time, but on all of our clear blocks, it tells you which one it is. I don't know if you can see that, oh, you can see the C. So on all of them, it has Stampin' Up on one side, and the type of block on the other. Can you see that A? So instead of guessing which block it is, just turn it over because I know for this size block, I can never remember it's an H. <laughs> so another little tip for you there. 
So we are going to start with our old olive and I'm just going to close this so that it's not rocking. And just start stamping. It doesn't matter if these bleed at all <laughs> because we are going to be blending it as we go. Now you can do some lighter ones in the background once you stamp off. And you're just building up until you have a nice amount of trees. You're not going to see a whole lot of these ones, but it's just building it up. And again, you don't want to see that little seam there. probably could just watercolor this part green but I didn't want to lose the shape of the trees try and offset so that you don't have the same trees stamped 20 times on top of each other okay there we go and we're just gonna fill a few more of these little gaps here now that is it for the old olive I am now going to take, first I'm going to clean my stamp. And you can see I'm just kind of turning this good as new. So now I'm going to take the returning Mossy Meadow in the new stamp case. And we are going to go over the ones at the front because this is darker than old olive was. And I get that we're looking at it this way, so it should technically be darker in there, but, you know. So be sure to add some taller ones for interest. And then cover up those trunks. <laughs> this really just is a lot of stamping. It is not as complex as some would have you believe. So there we go, I'm happy with that. And if you wanted some that are even darker, you could go with um, probably Memento Black, but I'm okay with this. Actually, let's get rid of that little one white spot there. Again, I'm going to paint with Night of Navy. I'm gonna grab some more here. I don't have a re-anchor. The easiest way to do this would be with a re-anchor, but just squeeze some more ink in there. Nice and juicy. Add some water. And now we are just going to do basically a wash on the night sky. You don't have to mask off these mountains. You certainly could, but you don't have to. We're gonna stop it right there. And I'm going to show you. So this is how I am now storing my ink spots, sponge daubers, and sponges. I don't use the big Stampin' Up! ones, only because I prefer the control I get with my little wooden ones. So each color has its own spot. So now that Knight of Navy is part of the Neutrals family, <laughs> I forgot, I threw my sponge out for the Knight of Navy because there wasn't enough um, to stick but I've got a finger dauber, but that would not give me the control that I want here. Basically what I'm going to do is ink this up and go along my edges. Because this is still wet, it's a little flimsy, but. I'm 
getting some lines because this is still wet. So just go in and fix them while they are still wet. But you can see I get a level of shading that I wouldn't get otherwise. And just keep building it up. Okay, now when I do work with watercolor, I always leave it a bigger sheet than I need. So I'm going to trim this down to four by five and a quarter. There we go. I'm happy with that. You can do as you please. Keep going or stop there. Totally up to you. And then just peel that off. Put it back in its spot. And eventually each color will have its own ink spot, sponge, and finger dauber. But work in progress. And this is just a little kit from Michaels. So I have three of them between the four color families and the in colors. So there we go. So we'll set that aside while we work on our sentiment. Now we are going to take out tabs for everything and get the for you mounted on an A block. And it is, I just find it easy, oh, right here. I usually find it easier to turn it the right way so you're reading them properly. <laughs> so we'll get out a little piece of vellum and I just use soft suede for this. We'll trim it down um, just about an inch, three quarters of an inch. We'll do for you and I always stamp it off to make sure that I've got a good impression. We'll start up here and I know you're not supposed to rock them but I find that I get a better impression when I do that and I don't get haloing so you do you figure out what works best for you so there's the for you and then we will take out the apron of love and use dad Again, mount it on an A block, stamp it in your soft suede, and you can decide whether you want it offset or straight. I like it like that. But again, you do you. No one does you like you. I know it's very cliche, but when you compare yourself to someone else, it really does. It is the comparison is the thief of joy, so you do you. No one else can. Inspirational message of the day. So we'll let that sit for a moment. I'm just going to use my tailored tag punch instead of my triple banner punch. Just another way. If you don't have the triple banner punch, you can do it that way. You can also just do it with scissors, but that's too freestyle for me. We're going to take out a little piece of our wood texture DSP and decide what we want there. I think I'm good with this one. And I know this is using a lot of snap sets. Stitched all around, we're going to take this little piece that looks like a little window awning to me. And just cut that out. Figure out where you want it to be. Could use that side. Let's do that. There we go. Trim everything down. glue this down before we trim it just so that we don't end up cutting it too short. Just a little bit of Tombow here. Just leave a little bit of a 
lip there because we are going to fold it and have it go over our base. And now we can punch it. Just figure out where your letters are. Leave yourself some room, center it, and punch. There we go. Let's trim these sides. And with vellum, because there's still really no good adhesive alternative, I just put it somewhere where you're not going to see it. Oh, that's on our flap. So let's put it there and here. Whoopsie. And our card base. To get any wrinkles out of here, you could run it through your Big Shot with, um, just as if you were going to emboss it. Get rid of any wrinkles, but I'm not gonna do that now. You could put twine or whatever you want on here to keep this natural look going, but I want my image to do the talking here. So there we go for you, Dad. And you could put, a, I think we will actually, a tiny little dot somewhere on that D. So it's not going to be as obvious. And just glue it down. And that's that. Doesn't look exactly the same as this one, but I kind of like it. I like that they don't look the same. Perfect. So there we go. For you, Dad. For you, friend. I uh, thank you for watching, and if you would like to continue to see my videos on a weekly basis, then just hit that subscribe button below and click the little notification bell to be notified when they go live. Thanks for joining, friends. Bye.